I want to show you three free WordPress cache plugins that you definitely want to check out. Now, a cache plugin is a plugin that's going to help you speed up your site when it loads. So that means that each time a visitor visits your site, the files are going to be cached. And by that, I mean that the files are going to be loaded quicker because it has them ready to serve. So cache plugins is a definitely must have on any WordPress site. Now, the good thing about it is that there is a free plugin, and that's the ones that I'm going to show you three free WordPress cache plugins. So let's get started with this video. What's up, SaaS masters? We're going to get started with the free cache plugins, but I also want to show you our sponsor, which is Hostinger. I am using their hosting plan and the cache plugins are going to be installed on that hosting plan. Now, Hostinger does have a cache system on some of the plans. So maybe you want to use that instead of using a free cache plugin. So let me show you the deal that's going on with Hostinger. If you jump over to the website with the link provided in the description, jump over to hosting web hosting, which is what I'm using right now. And they have several plans that are really attractive. So you have your single plan, which starts off at $1.99 per month and all the way up to $9.99 a month. Now I'm using the business plan, which has that cash feature that I was talking about before. So if you don't want to go the route for the with the free plugin, you can use the feature with this one. So the business and the, the cloud startup has the object cash for WordPress. You see, it's not available for the lower tier plans, but on the business and the cloud startup, it does have it. OK, so if you want to use that, go ahead instead of using the free plugin. OK, now, if you want to grab a deal that's going on right now, I do recommend grabbing, for example, the business one, which is the most popular one added to cart. And in the cart, there's an extra discount that I am going to provide you. So, for example, first of all, you can have the option to select one to 48 months. Obviously, if you select 48 months, you get the lowest price and you lock in the price for 48 months. OK, now scroll down here and you can see it's one hundred ninety one dollars with 52 cents. But if you have a coupon code, which is SAS master, you'll get an extra discount. So apply it That's going to reduce the price to one hundred and seventy two dollars with thirty seven cents. OK, let's jump over to the plugins. So first of all, jump over to your WordPress site, go into plugins at new and search for cash. OK, here we go. We're going to search for cash and there's going to be several options available. Some of them are free and some of them are not. So I would recommend any of these three because basically they have the most installs, the best positive feedback, and they differ in terms of like the extra features. When it comes to cash, they'll get the job done. But some of these will back will will work better on some of the plugins that you have or some of the themes that you're using. So it will depend. There's no one size fits all. OK, so do understand that. And a bit of a warning, um, if you use cash plugins, it might break certain parts of your site or the whole site. So you need to be careful what you enable and disable each thing that you enable. I do recommend that you ch you clear your cache and you check your website. Make sure that everything is functioning correctly because, yes, it will speed it up, but sometimes it will remove files that you actually need for the site to actually work correctly. OK, so do consider that. OK, just do some um, enabling, disabling and testing with all the settings that you work with a cache plugin. Now, they differ a bit in terms of settings. When it comes to, for example, some of these have database optimization, some have image optimization, and they vary in that sense. One of the most popular ones is W3 Total Cache, but it, it's been replaced by Lightspeed Cache. So if I were to place these on a one to three scale, I would go first with Lightspeed Cache. Second, I will go with WP Optimize because it has those extra features with images. And then with W3 Total Cache, one of the things I don't like about W3 Total Cache it's kind of the lack of UI and the user experience with that. OK, now let's start off with enabling the number one, which is Lightspeed Cache. And it works great, especially if your server, if you're hosting in the server with Lightspeed server. OK, so if you're using a VPS that has the option that uses it's using light server, that's going to work wonderfully. OK, so now I have installed this and a bit of a warning. I'm just showing you the three plugins. Do not enable three plugins or two cache plugins at the same time. OK, that that's not going to work correctly. OK, it's not, it's, gonna, it's not going to load your site faster. OK, so like I said, I've enabled Lightspeed cache and you're going to get started with the dashboard for this one. OK, so first, first of all, you're going to get all the data that it has to do with the Lightspeed plugin working. So the page load time, page speed score, etc. And I do recommend, like I said, when once you start enabling these and disabling, 
I do recommend that you check your page speed. Obviously, you want to gain performance, not lose performance. And yes, sometimes when you enable some of these settings, you will lose some performance. So you need to enable and disable. Like I said, it's test, enable and disable and test. Okay. So I do recommend that you do your speed test on page speed, which is what is Google testing. So do get some great scores on it and GT metrics. Okay. So use those as your parameters. Okay. So like I said, we're going to go into the presets for this particular one and you have several options available. So depending on how many optimization settings you want to enable, you can do so. Like I said, some of these might break your site. So advanced is the recommended one, and this is what it's going to do. So you see, it's going to do everything from basic and plus, plus all of this. Okay. CSS, JS and HTML minification, font display optimization, and everything that has to do with cache and some several settings, it's going to optimize. Now you can just go ahead and go straight to extreme, but do check your site. Everything, everything is working fine. If not, jump to aggressive, advanced and basic. So I like the way they set this up, W3 cache, total cache doesn't have this. So I like this because it's easier and it's more user friendly in that sense. So I will apply the advanced one. I'll go ahead and continue. Obviously, it's giving me a warning about that. OK, now it's applied the, re the presets. And something you have to consider is that there's a new icon here on the top and you can purge all purge LS cache, which is light speed cache, the CSS and JS cache. And why is this? Well, once you start enabling and disabling your settings, you'll want to purge this every single time. So it cleans that cache and it starts over again. So you make sure that everything is working correctly. Another reason you want to purge all the cache files is when you are installing or disabling or installing, doing things on your site, like new plugins, disabling plugins, uh, making some changes on your theme. You might want to purge and then check your site that everything is working fine. It might sound tricky and overwhelming in the beginning, but once you set this up, basically it's set and forget unless you do changes. OK, so in this case, I've applied these settings and we can go into these settings, go into general and we can check these one by one. So these are just general settings and the tuning So automatically upgrade. In this case, I wouldn't recommend that I would do this manually. And these are the rest of the settings So guest mode, guest optimization server, just some basic settings there. But where we really want to set this up is in cache. So in cache is where we're going to get into all the details. So you can see that all of these turned on basic ones right here. It's all these because obviously we enabled it in the features in the beginning. OK, now, like I said, if you test something and it's stopped working, you will want to turn some of these off or all of them and then turn these on one by one and just go all through all the settings here. For example, TTL, the purge, exclude, exclude all the cache plugins have exclude and there's a good reason for this because like i mentioned before some of the site some of the parts of your site might break and maybe a plugin stop working let's just say that you have a live chat and it's not loading or it's loading incorrectly with it doesn't have some images it's not loading something well you can exclude that from being cached so that plugin loads correctly okay so it that's why you have this and all of them have it okay as ESI, the objects, for example, object cache, the method, the browser, advanced, and WooCommerce settings for that. Okay. That's for light speed. So then we have CDN. So if you are using CDN, you can use the quick.cloud CDN, which is free. You do have to sign up and there will be some limitations, which is pretty cool. Or you can use your own CDN. So if you're using Cloudflare, you can connect it here. Or if you're using something else like Bunny CDN, for example, which I really love. You can use the link from here and you can decide to include images, CSS and JS or all of them. OK, so you have those options for the CDN type, the image optimization. So this one does have some image optimization settings that can compress is create several type of dimensions for the images, which is pretty nice that we have that image optimization settings. So depending what you want to enable or disable, just go ahead and enable these and on or off. WebP is a really good one to enable. So if you don't enable that, uh, Google loves WebP images for mobile view. So you will get a better page speed score if you enable WebP replacements. OK, so do enable that one page optimization. So again, more settings here, the CSS settings. This is where it's going to get more advanced, I would say, and more prone to break your site. So CSS minify. So that's enabled because we enabled that in the beginning, but then we can combine CSS but be aware this might break your site. So you can see this 
The setting is passively on due to guest optimization. So if I enable this, third cache, test side, test speed, and make sure that everything is obviously getting better and not worse, okay? And those for the CSS, same thing goes with JS, with the JavaScript files, HTML settings, medium, you go through all of these, okay? Database settings. So like I said, some of these have some database settings, some other cache plugins don't have it. You can clean the database, you can post revisions, auto draft, transfer post, spam comments, trash comments. So these are little things that help you, that are gonna save you time. For example, spam comments. There's sites that get ton of spam comments and it's a big hassle trying to delete these one by one, okay? So this is a great option to have to just clean those spam comments and get rid of them right away, okay? So that is for the Lightspeed. These are other tools, the Crawler and Toolbox, which are kind of basic, but they are there, okay? So like I said, this one is my favorite. Let's go ahead and deactivate. Now we're going to go into WP Optimize, which is my second choice. And this will vary depending if I activate or other activate other plugins that are doing, for example, image optimization, then I don't need those kind of settings. So I'll focus on cache. Okay, let me go ahead and activate it. Here we go. WP Optimize. It's over here. Here we go. And we have the database settings to get started. Here we go. And you got some optimizations that we can run. You can just go ahead and run them all. But again, I do recommend that you back up your site. And that should have been the first thing I, I would recommend to everyone. Back up your back up your site first, okay? So you can optimize database tables, clean all post revisions, etc. Just go ahead and do everything if you have a backup. Work with tables individually. So if you need to remove some tables that are not being used, for example, if this is not being used anymore, well, just go ahead and remove it because it's taking up space, even though it's not a lot but you can get rid of it and the settings for database. Next, we have the image optimizations for this one. This is more based on optimization than solely on cache, okay? So compress images. Yes, we do want to automatically compress when newly images are added. So when you upload a new blog post, the images added there will be optimized, okay? Show compression made a box on the images dashboard media page so we can see what it's been doing. Compress options, create WebP image, web version of images. Like I mentioned before, WebP is loved by Google. So yes, to enable it, I do recommend. And then you have some premium features that are not in the free plugin, okay? Next, we have the cache setting. So like the most important part. For cache, we have the page speed cache. So we do want to enable page cache. Here we go. Purge the cache. So again, like I said, all cache plugins have the option to purge, okay? Cache settings, the preload. So this will preload files um, what is that? Let me tell you. When someone visits your site, what the cache plugin is going to do, cache those files. Okay, it's going to have them ready to serve for the next visitor. But preloading does it beforehand. So you don't have to wait for someone to visit the site to actually cache the files. So that's what it was. That's what preload does. Okay. The advanced settings for this, again, we, we have your files that you don't want it to cache, conditionals, etc. GZIP compression. Right now it's enabled. We can go ahead and disable that. Static file headers, nothing set up there. Your minify. Okay, so we wanna enable minify files. That means if there's several CSS, several JS files, it's going to try to combine them and it's going to minify, all right? So again, do test the site once you set this up. If you enable it, purge cache, test site, okay? And the settings, there we go for general settings and not a lot going on here. So there's less options here. You can see that it's less focused on cache, but it gets the job done, okay? But you do get those extra settings for the image optimization and other type of tools, okay? So that is that one. Let's go ahead and deactivate it. And the last one, which is W3 Total Cache. I would say it's one of the most loved ones when it comes to solely focusing on cache files. But at the end of the day, it's the less least user friendly from the three that I just mentioned. Okay. So you got your dashboard to get started with W3 total cash. You'll get some basic settings. Most of the things are on the pro plan, but you get most of the settings for the cash system. Okay. We're going to go into general settings to get started. You got your page cash settings here for the general settings. You got your cash preload settings here, automatically prime the page cash. Like I mentioned before, the preload, the Purge policy page cache. This is uh, on the page version, advanced settings. Let's set that up. Next, we have the minify settings. 
So for Minify, you got these. So for example, general, you got your HTML and XML. Do you want to enable this? Yes. Inline CSS minification, inline JS. Uh, some of these will be required to gain some page score on Google page speed. So do test these out. Dominify feeds, line break removal, the JS settings enable, combine and minify, or just minify, or just combine only. Minify engine settings, HTTP2 push, enable, yes. CSS settings, if you want to minify also the advanced settings. And that's about it for that one. Database cache, we can cache the database. You have your settings here, your object cache. So I can see right off the bat, you can see that this is way less user friendly, like I mentioned before. Your browser cache settings, your cache groups, your CDN settings. So again, if you're using an external CDN, you can go ahead and enable it right here with the settings, right? With the correct settings right there. And the rest are just other things that you might want to consider. Just check them out. But if you're focusing solely on cache, I do recommend W3 Total Cache. If not, I would definitely go first with Lightspeed. And if you want to go with the least complicated one, WP Optimize, which has the cache, the database optimization, and the image optimization. So you have those three options to check out. Be aware that there's no one size fits all. Some of these cache plugins will work better on the other one than the other one. So do enable, disable and test. All right. And if you don't want to go through all the hassle of that, remember, if you are on a hosting your plan, that's the business. And the other one that I keep forgetting, the cloud startup, you do have the object cache enabled here, which is in the performance. If you don't want to go with the free plugins, you don't want to have the hassle of, you know, updating them and setting them up. You can use this with the page speed settings here. It's super easy. Analyze analytics and CDN. So you have that enabled here with Hostinger, which is the sponsor for this video. But there you go. Those are the three cache plugins that I do recommend that will improve your website loading speed. So go ahead and test them out and decide which one is the best for you. If you think none of these are the best and you think another one is the best, let me know in the comments. And that's a wrap.